The so-called Arab Spring in the Middle East has brought the Muslim Brotherhood to the threshold of power and influence. But the Middle East is not the only place where the Muslim Brotherhood is vying for power, as part of bringing the whole world under Islam. Walid al Kubazi is a Norwegian journalist from Iraq who produced and hosted a documentary for Norwegian TV called Freedom, Equality and the Muslim Brotherhood. It has never been shown on American TV. The Muslim Brothers have a practice. They learn to speak with two tongues. Al Kubazi interviewed Kamil al Najjar, who left the Muslim Brotherhood and is now under threat of death. Okay, they're trying to deceive the people and they have managed to deceive a lot of Western politicians into believing them. Their only aim is to control the world with Islam. They know they cannot use force to convert the West, so they use deceit. But if you travel to the Middle East and you speak Arabic, the Muslim Brotherhood leadership is quite open about what it intends. Mohammed Maria Kef was the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood until 2010. The Muslim Brotherhood's dream is to form a total Islamic state. Walid asked him where. I don't know. We Muslims are currently scattered all over. There is still a long way to go before we are able to take control in Europe. It will take a long time before it can happen. al Kubezi also interviewed Gamal Albana, the brother of the founder of the Muslim Brotherhood in 1928, Hassan Albana. And he had surprisingly harsh words for the modern Muslim Brotherhood movement, saying it does not believe in freedom. Not in any way. They do not believe in freedom at all. There is no Islamic authority that respects freedom or democracy. Elbana also condemned the state of modern Islamic culture. The Muslim mind is rusty. It has done nothing for the last 1,000 years. 1,000 years ago, the innovation ended. What does that mean? It means that you act without thinking. Muslims have become like monkeys only imitating others. This has lasted 1,000 years. Albana says the Brotherhood has instituted the wearing of the hijab or headscarf by Muslim women as a means of social control and says it's not supported by the Quran. Even the sister of the Muslim Brotherhood founder did not wear a hijab. Class photos from Cairo University show the evolution of the Muslim Brotherhood's program to force women to wear the hijab. In 1959, no Muslim women are wearing headscarves, and none in 1978. By 2004, 90% of the women are wearing the headscarf. The headscarf has been called the Muslim Brotherhood's logo. Walid al Kubezi says Norway and the West have been duped by the Muslim Brotherhood. The West and America, both, supported Islamists, and they thought that, oh, they are religious. Exactly our Christ, Christian congregation. One of the Brotherhood's key spiritual leaders, Sheikh Youssef al Karadawi, said on Arabic TV Defeating Rome, Italy, and Europe means that Islam will come back to Europe. I believe Islam will conquer Europe without using violence. The Muslim Brotherhood, they don't, it's not like, okay, we will take uh, over the world and uh, the power and. No, not like this. They, they don't speak about power at all. They say, okay, now we want only this, and then this, and then this. And then they start to work to gain more power. Dale Heard, CBN News, in Oslo, Norway.